Are you singing from here today? No, we're singing up there. Is that okay? Are you moving the stand for me? Yeah. Yeah. No worries. Good morning. Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to worship on this beautiful spring day that God has created for us. We continue during this season with our series of sermons called All Are Welcome, Including Me. And we are praying about how God's Spirit, and we're studying God's Spirit working through the book of Acts and opening the church to all people in the spirit of the risen Christ and how that is such a boundary-crossing Holy Spirit that we worship. So uh, as we continue through the season of Easter, I invite you to follow through the book of Acts with us as we read these scriptures. Uh, this morning, if you will, please register your attendance in the welcome cards in the pews. Those can be brought in at any time music is played to the uh, offering plates with our morning offering. And if you have a prayer concern, please feel free to write it on the pray card and hand it in to the ushers during the singing of our first hymn so that we can share your prayer um, as well. I'd like to also um, announce that we have a very s a special announcement from our staff parish relations committee chair, Beth Russell, our personnel committee chair. Beth, would you share that with us today? Good morning. Good morning. Oh, you can hear me. Okay. <laughs> um, Friday, we all received an email from the Reverend Mark Nakagawa telling us that he was excited and full of joy to share the doc uh, Reverend Jessica Strykos would be joining us as our senior minister here at United uh, Methodist Church. I don't know about all of you, but when I heard that James was leaving, I was a little shocked. And I'm sure you all were too. And, and it was a little hard to think that there would ever be a life going on after James left. <laughs> But I want you to know that SPRC worked to build something that we felt we wanted in a minister, and we sent that letter to Reverend Mark. And on Thursday, we had the opportunity to meet Reverend Jessica. And what a joy. We shared our concerns, our thoughts, our joys, our goals, our hopes, our prayers, and to find someone that fit those so well was exciting. She is such a Christ-like person, and I know that you are all going to welcome her. So I'm just going to read to you really quickly her little bio, and pardon me while I read, um, and then we'll go from there. Pastor Jessica is someone who loves to hear and share about God's grace and God's call. She is dedicated to discerning God's active presence in the church and the world community 
and therefore is passionate about intergenerational ministry, Christian education, ecumenical interfaith dialogue, and social justice. Jessica grew up in Yucaipa, California, and was raised in the United Methodist Church. She developed a deep love for God, nurturing in youth and camping ministries of her church. And as a result of these ministries, she first felt God's calling her to ministry at the age of 14. It's been living into this calling ever since. Jessica attended the University of Redlands, Redlands as an English literature major and a religious <coughs> study. While at Redlands, she met and fell in love with Tim Strykos, who you can see here on the screen. And they were married after they graduated. Tim and Jessica then moved to Massachusetts, where Jessica attended seminary at Harvard Divinity School. And after graduation, she was commissioned to serve the First United Methodist Church of San Diego. She was a, a, ordained an elder in the United Methodist Church in 2014. And in 2017, Jessica was involved in the merger of the First United Methodist Church of San Diego and of Point Loma United Methodist Church. She planted the Water's Edge Faith Community in the Ocean Beach neighborhood of San Diego. Tim and Jessica love living and serving with their daughters, Abigail and Eliza. Abigail is six and Eliza is 18 months. And their two dogs, Spartacus and Merlin. We are blessed to have the opportunity to share our wonderful church and our Christian values and beliefs with such a warm and Christian woman. She's a delight, and I know all of you will welcome her warmly. Thank you, Beth. Thank you so much. Several years ago, I had the opportunity to meet Jessica Strisco, and she is um, also someone who has worked at Sierra Service Project, as I have on staff for several years. So we have quite a bit in common. She has a heart for service and heart for serving in that youth mission trip as well. So um, I, I thank you so much, Beth, for introducing her. And I know that the church will have opportunities to greet her in the future. She truly is a talented pastor, and I'm excited for the future of this congregation. I truly am. So with that, will you please stand as you're able to join in our opening prayer this morning. Good morning, everyone. Please join me in the opening prayer. Gracious and loving God, you meet us there where we are. We gather together from many walks of life, but we are united with one heart in the body of Christ. In our time of worship, Open our ears to hear your voice. Open our eyes to see your glory. Open our minds to receive your word. Open our hearts to know your presence.
The first scripture this morning is from Acts chapter 11, verses 1 through 18. Now the apostles and the believers who were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also accepted the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticized him, saying, Why did you go to the uncircumcised men and eat with them? Then Peter began to explain to them step by step, saying, I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision. There was something like a large sheet coming down from heaven, being lowered by its four corners, and it came close to me. As I looked at it closely, I saw four-footed animals, beasts of prey, reptiles, and birds of the air. I also heard a voice saying to me, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. But I, I, but I replied, By no means, Lord, for nothing profane or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But a second time the voice answered from heaven, What God has made clean you must not call profane. This happened three times. Then everything was pulled up again to heaven. At that very moment, three men sent to me from Caesarea arrived at the house where we were. The Spirit told me to go with them and not to make a distinction between them and us. These six brothers also accompanied me, and we entered the man's house. He told us how he had, been, how he had seen the angel standing in his house, saying, Send to Joppa and bring Simon, who is called Peter. He will give you a message by which you and your entire household will be saved. As I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them, just as it had upon us at the beginning. And I remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized by the Holy Spirit. If then God gave them the same gift that he gave us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could hinder God? When they heard this, they were silenced. And they praised God, saying, Then God has given even to the Gentiles the repentance that leads to the way of life. The word of God.
This reading is from John chapter 13, verses 31 through 35. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me. And as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you should also love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The word of the Lord. Please pray with me before I offer a message this morning. Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. One of the best ways to understand this scripture from Acts as we continue to uh, explore this theme, all are welcome, is to talk about the wonderful educational book, Green Eggs and Ham. This is very similar in its storyline to what Peter experiences in his prayerful vision on, in this scripture. You might remember that book, Green Eggs and Ham, where uh, Dr. Seuss's character, Sam I Am, invites the narrator of the story to try Green Eggs and Ham, but that narrator insists that he does not like them, though he has never, ever eaten them. So Sam I Am says, why don't you try these, this meal in different venues, try them in different places, um, like in a box or with a fox or in a house or with a... Very good. Uh, here, there, or... Anywhere. Oh, you are a well-read congregation. I am so impressed. But still, this narrator says, I will not eat them, Sam I am. I will not. And he refuses. And he insists that he does not like green eggs and ham, though he has never even tasted them at all. Finally, finally, to avoid more of this harrowing peddling of food by Sam I am, the narrator finally tries them and realizes he loves green eggs and ham and he will eat them in a house and with a or in a box and with a or here or there or anywhere he will eat green eggs and ham it's wonderful that god uses this same instrument the same uh, metaphor of food to get through to Peter because up to that time the chosen people kept their faith to themselves. This was a faith for the Jews. The Messiah was destined to be for the Jews only. The thought of welcoming Gentiles into this faith was distasteful. In many ways, when we want to welcome someone who is different from us, we have kind of a visceral reaction like we would to a foreign or unfamiliar food. I invite you to think of some food that you've felt this way in the past about. Perhaps there's something that you just did not want to eat. When I was a child, a sunny side up egg was like that for me. Not a green egg, but a, just a regular egg. Um, and because it was so slimy and slick and uh, it was it was not appetizing I have recovered from my evil ways and now I will eat as many eggs as you would like to serve me I've even had green eggs and ham and they are not bad either the food coloring doesn't make too much of a difference but we have to try these things and get over them at some point now I respect some people say I just can't eat a certain food and I've, I've learned that that's a real thing people can't get over just any uh, food dislike and I respect that but both God and Sam I am are inviting us to try it to try new foods to try new relationships and sure enough as soon as this vision takes place where Peter is 
uh, invited to try these new foods. Soon after that, he meets new people, Gentiles, whom he must welcome. This is a bizarre vision in some ways. He was on a rooftop, and he had uh, this vision. It seems like he was both sleepy and hungry at the same time because he had a vision, and it said there was food on this sheet that was lowered from heaven, but it, these were live animals that were all unkosher animals. A Jew was not to eat those things, but God said, kill and eat. And not only this, this vision appeared to Peter three times. And this is a biblical way of God saying, I really mean it. I want you to get over your queasiness and be able to eat these unkosher foods. In fact, what God says is, what God has made clean, you must not call profane or unclean. In other words, You, Peter, are not God. I am. I will say what is acceptable to eat and who it is acceptable to welcome, not you. Peter gets the lesson because when those Gentiles come to his house, he welcomes them. And they are brought into the Christian faith. And this means so much to Peter that he goes back to Jerusalem to tell the apostles about this. Remember that the apostles still would have been Jewish Christians at that time. And it would be thought that you would have to become Jewish before you became Christian. Meaning that you would abide by all of the laws of the Old Testament before you could become a believer in Jesus Christ. But Peter teaches the other apostles that in this vision, that's not what happened. God made it clear to him that that without following all those laws, even while eating these unkosher foods, someone could be a Christian. A Gentile could become a Christian even if they ate those things and did not obey all the laws of the Old Testament. He puts it very plainly for them. He says that he saw the Holy Spirit fall upon them. And he says, I remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave them the same gift that he gave us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could hinder God? When they heard this, they were silenced and they praised God, saying, then God has given even to the Gentiles the repentance that leads to life. On this day, the doors of the church were blown wide open. No longer would this be a faith destined only for a limited group of people. This faith became that day a religion for all the world. Thanks be to God. Amen. And the law then became very simple. From then on, instead of obeying all of the hundreds of laws in the Old Testament about what we would have to eat or what we would wear or who we could fully welcome as as siblings in our faith, from then on, this faith would be about following Jesus, believing in him and loving as he loves. It becomes as simple, really, as the command that we hear in John, which was read for us earlier today, when Jesus says, love one another, just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. This command, or, and perhaps the greatest command, love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, love your neighbor as yourself. Perhaps also the Ten Commandments, because Jesus does also teach us and teach his followers to follow those ten. That's about all that the believers would be required to abide by going forward. The rest is welcoming others, opening our doors. And the truth became clear that when we limit who God would welcome, we limit our own experience of God. Amen? When we say no and exclude others, we are diminishing our own experience of God's complete and wonderful kingdom. We limit and diminish our own faith. I had a long, ongoing debate with a friend who became a pastor. He was a childhood friend, and we had a debate about this concept of inclusiveness and how important it was 
for Christians. He insisted, he's more of a conservative evangelical preacher. He became a pastor, as, as I have, but he became a more uh, evangelical or perhaps fundamentalist pastor. But he, he said, you know, James, I, I feel like we get distracted by this conversation of inclusiveness. Shouldn't we focus just on salvation in Jesus Christ? Isn't that the most important thing? Yes, we need to talk about welcoming LGBTQ persons or women or people of different ethnicities, but aren't those relatively small conversations in light of the con conversation of eternal salvation? And I partially agreed. I said, well, um, I suppose so, but I didn't know really how to answer him at that time. But the scripture today gives me an answer. So, Andrew, here it is. <laughs> Here's my answer. And it comes from Peter and the book of Acts and the way that the church was immediately shaped by the risen spirit of Jesus in those first days of the church. Yes, they were saved by the grace and love of Jesus Christ. And immediately the question arose, who would this apply to? Who would be welcomed into that saving faith? Immediately. The apostles were forced into that question by the Holy Spirit himself. And we were faced with that invitation and that dilemma. Who would we welcome? And in those early days of the church, they immediately realized that if they were to truly follow the way of Jesus, if they were to truly follow the guidance of the Holy Spirit, they must open their hearts and their faith to everyone. Because God was going there before them. In other words, this faith would not be complete if it became exclusive. Immediately, Jesus' risen spirit blew the doors off of the church and brought in all the colors of the world and welcomed all. Thanks be to God. Amen. Throughout our history, the church returns to these debates. Who will be considered a child of God as the choir beautifully sang for us? I am a child of God. You are a child of God. Who would this apply to? We go back and forth and back and forth. Perhaps we know of stories that are heartbreaking. I, I know that sometimes uh, when people have been divorced, they then go to church and they are refused Holy Communion. Has anyone ever known someone who's been through that pain as, as though divorce is not a heartbreaking enough experience to be adding insult to injury when that person goes to church and saying, no, you may not receive Holy Communion. You must remain apart from the body until you confess that sin. John Wesley, our leader in the United Methodist tradition said, no, 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 God's grace goes before us just as God's spirit went before the disciples. God welcomes all to the table. Those sins or whatever they might be that we have to work out, we do so with God's spirit over time. But first, we are welcome. First, we are welcome, all welcome, including you and me. We also might know of people who have been excluded from the ministry. I talked to one woman who had, in an early period in her life, felt that she was called to become a, United, uh, a Methodist minister, and she was then told that she should find a profession that was more suited to a woman. And she lives her life without having ever followed that call. Therefore, I am so glad <laughs> that we have heard today about a woman who felt called at the age of 14 and will now serve as the first woman senior minister of this congregation beginning July 1st. Let's give thanks to God. For that. Thanks be to God that over time, United Methodists became truer to the original spirit of the church which saw no distinction. Last week we read about Tabitha, a woman who was considered an apostle. That is the highest office you could have short of Jesus. Immediately, 
the church considered women and men to be equals. And then we lost that teaching over the history of the church, and we bring it back today. Thanks be to God. Whenever we lose this understanding of being equals as God's children, we are, are diminished in our spirits and in our faith. We see, even this morning, as we open the papers, a heartbreaking, heart-wrenching uh, news, uh, news bulletin about another active shooting in um, Buffalo, New York, where 10 people were killed in an overtly racist hate crime perhaps an act of terrorism, they might even try it in those terms, as 10 people were killed and many others wounded by an active shooter who, who was clearly entering into a black neighborhood on purpose to kill his victims. He even had a racial epithet on his high-powered rifle. Our nation has so much work to do in terms of race relations and control of these arms and so on and so forth. We see that the hate in his heart is rooted in this kind of prejudice, in this inability to love one who is different, in this lack of understanding that we are all children of God. We see that this teaching of St. Peter and what he learned from God's Spirit that day is a life-saving teaching because it undoes the hate that perpetrates these kinds of crimes. It is urgent that we teach this equality in Christ Jesus. And how do we do this? We go back to the metaphor of Sam I am or God, where we need to taste and see what this food is really like. We need to try it, really overcoming these boundaries to experience a faith without boundaries is a matter of the beliefs of the beliefs of the mind and the experience of the heart first yes we must believe that we are equal and all children of god but we must also experience each other as equals just as we would experience a new meal and its flavors we must experience the new friendships that we would have with someone who is different from ourselves Perhaps we can think of trying those green eggs and ham or trying some foreign food that we never thought that we would like. I used to dislike Mexican food. I'm sorry. Forgive me, but I did. And I finally confessed and repented of that terrible sin and grew to love Mexican food. I used to wonder, why is it that people will eat food that hurts their mouths? That makes no sense. And now I can't get enough hot sauce on my meals. This is an acquired taste. And in a similar way, we are called to acquire a taste for each other. Every relationship is like this. We might even think of our faith in God in these terms. Some of us might have an aversion to thinking of believing in God, or perhaps we've been raised with sort of an aversion to God or taught harmful teachings about God, and we don't want to try that faith. I encourage people who have that uh, resistance to a faith in God to think of it as a stream of water. You might want to jump in that beautiful mountain stream and get your feet and your body refreshed, but you think, well, it looks too cold, and the current looks too fast or dangerous. I don't think I'll get in. But of course, you can't know how cold it is or how fast the current flows until you enter into those waters. Our relationship with God is this way. Our relationship with others is also this way. Try it, try it, and you may. Try it, and you may, I say, Sam I am tells us. This is true of our faith. It's true of our experiences of other people. Even welcoming a new minister, whoever that person is, is always this kind of process. And I encourage us all, as I go to meet my new friends at, in San Diego, where Serena and I will be appointed, and as you meet your new pastor and her family, try it, and you may like it, I say. We must all give it a try. Amen? We will see where God will lead us. 
what new things we might learn. Because, of course, this gospel and this message and this faith is shaped by the colors which we welcome into God's church. When someone new comes in, we are changed. This church is changed. Our faith is changed. And all of a sudden, this early Christian faith was transformed as people of many colors and many languages and many backgrounds came to be a part of Christian faith and practice. What a miraculous welcome. What a revolution they embraced in those days that was led by God's Holy Spirit. Let us joyfully follow God's Spirit across every boundary that God's love would guide us to cross. May we open our hearts to new relationships God wants us to experience. And may God use us to welcome all persons into Christ's eternal family. May it be so. Amen. Let us sing together this beautiful song, Help Us Accept Each Other. Holy Spirit, we give you thanks and praise that your family is greater and broader than we have ever imagined. We thank you for the spirits and the souls that you have welcomed into your church throughout the ages. We rejoice in the Spirit of Christ who opens the doors of the church wider than we thought possible. Help us now to live into your vision of a faith without boundaries and a family with wide open doors. Make us always willing to try new friendships and experiences in your name. Grant us minds that are curious to learn from those who are different from us, hearts that are eager to grow in our own wisdom. Above all, Holy Spirit, let us never hinder your work, but always follow you as we feed the hungry, welcome the stranger, and befriend all who are lonely. 
until all people taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Continue to strengthen, dear God, the work of your church. We give you thanks for the heritage of this church, which has welcomed so many, which is known in this community for welcoming all people in the spirit of Christ. May Anaheim UMC continue to be that beacon of grace in Jesus' name. Send your peace, Holy Spirit, throughout this world. Comfort those who experience violence and who have known violence as recently as yesterday. Comfort all in Buffalo, New York, who have experienced racial violence in a deadly form. Heal those who mourn the loss of loved ones. May they know that Christians and people throughout the world Pray for them today. Holy Spirit, be with those who suffer war and violence in Ukraine. Protect the, the innocent and stay the hand of those who violently oppress and kill the innocent in that region. Continue to heal this earth of all illness. We pray for a cure for COVID. Oh God, we pray that you would eradicate that disease from this earth as we seem to approach one million of those who have passed away from this disease, help us to continue to be wise and protect one another, even as we gradually regather together. Comfort all those who have lost loved ones to this disease. Come, Holy Spirit, transcend the boundaries of our world and of our own hearts, so that we may joyfully live together in your love today and forevermore. For we offer these prayers in your name, as we lift to you our prayers in silence, lifting praises, petitions, and confessions to you in this time of silent prayer. It is good, Holy Spirit, to find hope and healing in your presence. Now hear our prayers for those who especially need your care today. For our home-centered members who cannot be with us in person, but are with us in spirit. Lord, in your grace, hear our prayer. Bless your church and its ministries. And I know that the... Um, the food pantry is looking for a couple of people to help with um, cleanup, so we pray that those people are, are led to us and can be part of that ministry. Lord, in your grace, hear our prayer. For all those who serve in the military and those who are related to our own church members, for those who serve as firefighters, paramedics, police officers, and anyone who puts their safety at risk to keep us safe, as we pray always for God's peace to prevail on earth. Lord, in your grace, hear our prayer. For missionaries, 
for those working with relief organizations, and for all those working for peace. May God be with them. Lord, in your grace, hear our prayer. For the oppressed, the downtrodden, and those sick in body and spirit, we pray that you will surround them with your comfort and love. Lord, in your grace, hear our prayer. For children suffering from depression, may they be safely led to the professionals who can help them. Lord, in your grace, hear our prayer. And we have some prayers from the congregation today from Rebecca Whitfield. Prayers for Joe Beth and Bill Cooper, who are recuperating, I'm sorry, who are experiencing health concerns this weekend. May God surround them with healing, love, and grace. Lord, in your grace, hear our prayer. And from Sharon Rungi, uh, my prayer is for Bryce and Suzanne Rungi for courage. Best of luck as they both are making big job changes. Lord, in your grace, hear our prayer. And from Bobby, uh, thank you to Sharon Monkey for the Mother's Day sachets. Lord, in your grace, hear our prayer. prayer. And a prayer from, from Cindy Warner, and she's requesting that um, we pray for her husband, Mark, who has cancer surgery that will take place this week. Lord, in your grace, hear our prayer. We offer all of our prayers in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now let us continue in worship, bringing offerings, as we are able for the work of God's church in the world.
us so much. Through your love and abundance, our cup overflows. From the bounty of your blessings, we offer these gifts back to you. Through these offerings, may we love neighbors of every kind, just as you have so generously loved us all. Amen. Christ who has welcomed every one of us to welcome one another and to welcome every neighbor. And may the grace of Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit remain with us forevermore. Amen. Amen.